I got a story about a zoo. I mean, you know, that's, I got all kinds of stories, and a lot of them about wrestling. Most of them are about wrestling, obviously. But I'm in Australia. It's 1973. I'm going to be there for three months. I take my wife. And you and you're working for, for, Bar, for Jim Barnett, right, when he was uh, he was running the biggest promotion in the world at that time over in Australia. Darn right. I'm part of that those mega cards. God, what a crew. And so it's a phenomenal crew. You know, you, you hit that crew had people from everywhere. Uh, from America, it had, I was on it. Uh, Austin Idol was on it. Uh, uh, it uh, Tex McKenzie, Tex McKenzie uh, from, uh, Mi- from it- Italy was Mario Milano. From uh, Greece was Spiros Arion. From India, the country of India was Sabu Singh, the original Sabu Singh. I mean, it had a group of, it had a real great shooter out of uh, uh, New Zealand. It was, it was a, it was a card that was composed of every country you could just about imagine on the face of the earth. Uh, it had a little Japan, the midget from Tokyo, and he used to go to the <laughs> beach with me. I'd take him to the beach. So oh, you guys must have been a pair. Uh, there him, you go. Three foot, three foot nine and you six foot nine. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it was a, it was a conglomerate and I remember going in, let's just, we'll start with, I remember going in the first day and sitting in a room with a, I look around at the talent and I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. This group. And Jim Barnett came in and he, he, he sashayed up to, there's a podium at the front of the room. And he, and now, now, now that that's not an exaggeration. Jim had a, a gate to his, a carriage to his walk that would be best termed as sashaying. Yeah, he he sashayed in, and he and he had that little pot belly, and he had his arms crossed and rested on his little pot belly as he walked in, right, and he walked to the podium, and he's and everybody got quiet, and and he looked over the group, and he started at one side, and you could see him move his head very slowly from one side to the other. And he for, he doesn't say hello, anything else. After a long pause, he goes, oh my. He goes, I see nothing here but money, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So yeah, Australia, <clears throat> it was it was phenomenal. I'm there with my family. I got a, I got a two year old son and a one year old son and I'm, I'm taking them to the zoo. First of all, after this meeting that I just described, he has a little to say, we're going to do great. I see all these things happening and who's going to be in charge of rats. And he goes through the whole routine, (laughs) you know, his normal routine. And then he, he, we go, he dismisses and I go out he says, Ron, could you sit outside here? I want to send somebody to help you with something. So I sit there and then he sends down Lonnie. Now, if you never was in Australia, Lonnie's pretty much a Jim. He's a copy of Jim. And Lonnie comes up and, and he says, Ron, he's just like Jim, <laughs> Ron, I'm Lonnie. I want to help you find a home a house, a place for your family while you're here. It was really, really nice to me. So I'm, I'm thinking, boy, I'm halfway around the world and I'm not sure the group I'm in, I'm in here involved with, you know? So we go, Lonnie takes me and my, my ex-wife and, uh, and we go to, he says, I'm going to find you a pool. Would you like to have a pool at your apartment? I said, yeah, I'd love to have a pool. So we go down to the Sydney Harbor, okay? Sydney Harbor is huge, and and there's apartments lined up along the harbor. And I go, geez, this is nice, you know, Lonnie, this, this looks good, you know, where's the pool? And we go in, we look at the apartment, and then he says, let's go out and check the pool. And now Sydney Harbor is the most shark-infested water in the world. <laughs> Yeah, 
I mean, you you got them all in there. You got the tigers and you got the whites and you got the makos and you got you got the hammerheads. You got every shark in the world is in Sydney Harbor, right? So we get ready to look at the pool. I said, yeah, well, let's look at the pool. He says, okay. So we walk out back of the apartment complex and we walk out to the actual water, to the bay itself, Sydney Bay. And and I look, and there's a little runway. It's like four feet wide that you can walk on. It goes out into the water about 40 feet, and it goes over about 40 feet, and it comes back about 40 feet. And and I go to Lonnie. I go, uh, is that the pool? And he goes, <laughs> and he goes yes. And I go, in in the bay? In the Sydney Harbor where the sharks are? And he goes, well, Ron, it's got shark nets. <laughs> <laughs> so I look down and it connected to this platform is shark nets that go down to the bottom of the water, right? And I'm like, I'm like, are you expecting me to put my little boys in this, this so-called pool in which the sharks are just right outside the nets and maybe can get through the nets. Well, I don't think that happens very often, Ryan. <laughs> and I said, it's not going to happen at all with my kids, man. I said, no, I'm not going to stay here. So that, you, you know, give people an idea. Australia, this is 1973. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a new country, basically. Uh, Sydney's probably a population of 5 million at that point. I don't know how big it is now, but it'd be considerably larger. But so I take my kids to the zoo. And, you know, and it's a beautiful zoo. I mean, it's a fabulous zoo. And, and my ex wife and I, and they, it, the one's in a stroller, he's a year old. And the, the little two year old, you know, I'm carrying, he's holding my hand and we walk yeah. around the zoo and we get to the monkey cage. There's a monkey cage there. And it's a big cage. I mean, you know, they've got a, each thing in that zoo had its a, a big space for the animal. Now, this monkey cage is probably, it's probably 150 feet wide and maybe a hundred feet deep it's got a back room that you can see what's going on in the back area here it's got several big it's probably 40 feet high and it has several ropes that come down to the to the floor basically to the floor of the deal it has it has little platforms and and little bars that the monkeys can do little tricks on and and that kind of stuff on both sides and right in the middle of this entire conglomerate is a platform that sits up about 10 12 feet above the above the surface where all the monkeys are and there's nothing up there on the platform so we walk up there and, and there's probably 50 monkeys in there some of them are big, and there's some of them that are small. And so and there's hardly anybody there. And the, we're the, for the four of us, and there's maybe six other people. And we start, we're just standing there watching what's going on. One of the monkeys, the big monkey, climbs one of the ropes. And there's a little monkey in there. He's very small, and he's walking around. He's got his, his, his digit finger out, stick straight out. Like he's going to point at somebody, something, or, you know, uh, and uh, so he, the, you got the monkey that's climbed the rope, and the monkey climbs the rope. He only goes up about, say, four feet, and the little baby monkey, he comes over, and he gets a hold of the rope, and he climbs up. Now, the one on the rope is kind of watching us. He's not paying attention, and the little monkey comes up and sticks his finger in that monkey's ass. <laughs> <laughs> so you know and and so you know to me i laughed because you know it was funny and because it's and, a monkey sticking its finger in another monkey's ass yeah, you're gonna laugh yeah, yeah it's a little baby monkey and he, he sneaks up on the big monkey and he sticks his <laughs> finger in his butt right and when he does that 
the monkeys, the all the rest of the monkeys in there, they see it and they start laughing. They're all go, ooh, 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 ooh. they're all the whole cage is just laughing and roaring about it. And the little monkey takes off running, and the big one chases him to the back room back there. And he grabs him by the neck and he he, he just whitewashes his face. Bow 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 bow. He slaps his face four or five times. <laughs> and, you know, and so and then. So I'm like, wow, this is good. Yeah, you know, and obviously there's people walking by and they see that. So there's a crowd starts to congregate, you know, like, wow, look at that. This is funny, right? So the monkey slaps the little one around and then he walks back, you know, slowly and he's he's giving everybody a bad look, you know, like, shut up. You know, he's a, one of the big guys, right? He's one of the alphas in there, right? And he's giving them a look like, you better shut that up. Don't be laughing about this stuff. And he climbs up the same rope. I watch the little monkey in the back, and he waits for a couple of minutes, and then he picks his finger and sticks it out again, like, here I come, right? <laughs> and he starts coming again. He, he sneaks up, same routine. Climbs up the rope, and the big monkey's watching the crowd. Now there's a bigger crowd out there, and he gives it to him again. <laughs> oh, dog. They all start laughing again. Oh, oh, oh. They're all making the monkey noises. They're jumping around and they're slapping on the ground. Hot oh, dog, that's so funny. And he goes and chases the little son of a gun. He grabs him again. Pow, 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 pow. He's, the routine goes on about three times. Now there's a huge crowd there, and there must be 300 people. They're backed up 15 deep, and they're all into this show. They, they, we got a show going on here, right? The little monkey just continues to do it to him. The big one beats the heck out of him. <laughs> goes right back, and he does it to him again. Now the big alpha, the alpha monkey, it's a, probably a chimp, actually. You know, He's a big son of a gun. There's that platform that's up there. Uh, in the middle of the cage, about 10 feet off the ground. And he's he comes, walks, he kind of shrugs himself over to the front of the cage, and he just slowly checks everybody out, like, well, we got a big crowd here. It's time, you know. And and he then he climbs up, and he sits on that platform. Now, everybody's watching him. You know, he, he's 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 he. It's like he. It's like they're putting on a show, and somebody trained them to do this <laughs> act. You know, and uh, so now they've done the deal, and they slap the little monkey around and the whole deal, and it's time for the big boy to close the show out, right? So he climbs up the plat, gets on the platform, and he sits there and he looks out at the crowd, and everybody now gets kind of quiet. You know, like what the hell is he going to do? And he reaches back there, and he takes a dump in his hand. <laughs> and, 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 he, and, and the, now the moms and the kitties and everything, they're all aghast. Like, oh, 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 no, oh, no. And then he, 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 he just takes his time, and he looks at everybody again. And then he, turn, he reaches up there, and he pulls that bottom lip out. And he puts that into his bottom lip. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You talk about ending a show. Oh, they started screaming and dragging their kids down the aisle. And, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. Oh, geez. I just, I couldn't help but just laugh. I was probably one of the last people there. Like, gosh, are y'all going to do this two hours from now? I'm thinking. I can, I can <laughs> it's show, hours, it's a matinee in an evening. <laughs> yeah, you go. Is, is, is this a morning deal, an afternoon deal? How many times a day do you do this show? So, you know, it's a strange, strange place. Maybe that's a strange story to tell. But, uh, you know, I've never seen anything like that. I did go to a, a zoo in Atlanta. They had the big gorilla in Atlanta. Oh yeah, yeah. What, it, that was one of the ones that was they had him named and everything, right? Yeah, big star. He's the star of the zoo, right? So I go to the zoo in Atlanta, and I don't know what it is about monkeys, but <laughs> it, you know, it's and it, and it's got a glass. It's got a glass. He's in no 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 cage. He's in. He's behind the glass, and uh, there's a kid. There's a kid that's next standing next to me, and he's got a balloon on the end of a stick. One of those type of deals. 
And the, the gorilla comes up, and people are all looking at me because I'm tall anyway, you know. They're, they're, and the gorilla comes right up to where I am. And he looks through, and he, it's my, it's like a female gorilla, I guess. And, and she kisses the glass <laughs> right, right where I, my face is, basically. You know, she kisses, and her lips spread out the size of a plate, a dinner plate. <laughs> You can see her teeth and her big old lips are on the window. And I'm like, oh, geez, man. So I get, I, I start to leave. And they and the crowd goes, no, 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 don't go, don't go. She likes you. And I go, hey, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to play dummy here for your monkey in there, guys. You know, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. So then they say, take the balloon. So I so I play K. Okay, you want to have some fun. So I take the balloon, the stick and the balloon, and I start beat, pounding it on the window. And here she comes. She comes back and she puts her lips, <laughs> she kisses the glass again. Oh, they go crazy, the cloud now. Now the crowd is kind of like in Sydney. They're, it's growing by the minute. Yeah. You know? Oh, look, she's in love with this guy, man. She's The monkey's in love with the guy, the gorilla. So it was it was a little bit of a nasty situation, but I finally just said, "That's it, show's over, folks. I'm out of here." So, and 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 besides that, right? You know, at least you you've exchanged the phone numbers. You made a, a, an arrangement to meet later when it was less public. <laughs> it's it's you and these monkeys. I have come for maybe that, maybe that's why you were so talented at keeping wrestlers in line for so long in the locker room because you have a way with. Um, of dealing with monkeys? Of dealing with well, <laughs> primitive beasts. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, that's, hey, that's that's the kind of stories that you can hear on the stud cast, not only about Ron's family, 90 years experience in professional wrestling, but also he uh, how he has tamed savage beasts and made them fall in love with him, or at least not shove poo in your face. Hey, there you go. There you go. I mean, uh, you know, I don't go to zoos anymore. I don't blame you. I don't want to go to one with you. Yeah, I haven't been to a zoo in 35 years, you know, because uh, I think I'm going to get to the monkey gale and something's going to happen, you know. It's going to make a fool out of me or them, one or the other. Oh, so I tell you, you, you know, my, my ex-wife wanted me to take her to the zoo, but I said, honey, I'm afraid they won't let you leave. You know, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. I'm afraid some monkey's going to try to try to make love to me through the through the uh, the, the 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 glass. So. Um, it's safe, safe monkey sex. Brian, jump in and save us here. I think we that's that's certainly the end of that bit. Before we get into safe monkey sex, I think that's the end of that bit. Maybe the end of all bits going oh, forward. The, 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 the be all and end all of bit. That's fucking hilarious, Ron. We hope you've enjoyed this stud story. Find the Ron Fuller Studcast at tnstud.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Attic, and everywhere you find your favorite podcast. Now, back to the great Brian Last and the experience himself, Jim Cornette.